So let's do these four derivatives. Each of these derivatives involves e to the x somehow, and uh, definitely the chain rule. So let's uh, start with a. When we look at a here, um, this is going to be product rule, right? Let me just recopy it. Just give me one second. To do a, like I said, we're going to have to use product rule. The first factor is e to the minus 5x, and the second factor is cos 3x. So what is the derivative of this first factor here? Well, we're going to, we know the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So the derivative of e to the minus 5x is that times the derivative of negative 5x, which is negative 5. So that takes care of the derivative of the first factor. The second factor is just recopied. And then plus, this time we just recopy the first factor. We leave it alone. And we multiply by the derivative of this. We know the derivative of cosine x is minus sine x. So it's, we can use the chain rule to do the cosine of 3x. Its derivative is going to be minus sine 3x times the derivative of 3x, which is 3. Um, maybe I'll put brackets there. All right, and that's it. Since we don't have to simplify, um, we can stop there. If we were to simplify, I think we should factor out a negative e to the minus 5x. Why don't I just do that quickly, even though we're not supposed to? <laughs> this would be 5 cos 3x um, plus 3 sine 3x. I think that's right. Okay, so that takes care of uh, the first problem. Let's uh, get B here. What is it going to uh, look like? One second. To do B, we're going to have to use the quotient rule, right? So let's do it. The derivative of the top, the numerator, is e to the minus x squared times the derivative of negative x squared, which is minus 2x. And then we multiply by the denominator left alone. This is quotient rule, so we have a minus here. Then we leave the top alone. And we multiply by the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of this is simple. It's 1 plus 0, which is just 1, all over the bottom squared, x plus 3 squared. And you can stop there, but I have a real need to factor out this negative e to the minus x squared. So I'm just going to do that anyway. Let's see here. Over here, what do I have left over? This times this, so I think it's going to be 2x squared plus 6x. And over here, I just have a plus 1 left over, I think. And uh, that's good enough for there. We could even bring that to the denominator, right? And uh, if we were if we were supposed to simplify, we should do that, but I'll just stop there. Did I do that correctly? 2x squared, the negative is gone, plus 6x, and here all that's gone, plus 1 is left over. Great. Let's look at uh, question C here. So this one has a cube root in it. And... Um, Usually when you take the derivative, it's good to, to get rid of that. Excuse me, that's not what I want. How are we going to get rid of that cube root? No problem. It's just going to be raised to the power of one-third, right? So let's, re be, let's not do the derivative quite yet. Let's rewrite it to make it into a better form, and then we'll do the derivative on the next step. So like I said, we re replace that cube root with a power of one-third. Same thing. Now the derivative will be more, will be nicer to do. We know that to do a derivative of a power function, we bring the power out front. Whatever's under here, we just kind of ignore it. 
Then we do this power minus 1. 1 third minus 1, that's negative 2 thirds. And then we multiply by the derivative of what we ignored. So we have to multiply by the derivative of 2x plus e to the 3x. Well, the derivative of 2x is 2 times 1, or just 2. The derivative of this is e to the 3x times the derivative of 3x. That's the chain rule. And um, let's leave that there. That's fine as it is. Not too much. I don't think there's really any simplifying you can do there. We could maybe bring this to the, the denominator to give a positive exponent. Well, why don't I do that? I know that. Uh, and I'll write this 3 in front here just to make it look nicer. I know that we don't have to simplify, but it's such a habit. The expression doesn't look right until it's simplified somehow. All right, so either one of these answers is fine. For, for D, that's not going to work. Let's see what that one turns out to be. I hope you guys are working these out on your own before you watch the video so that uh, you can make sure you understand what you're doing. It's best to try it before you watch so you know where you're having troubles at. How are we going to do the derivative of this? What is the uh, what is the derivative of secant x again? Let's just uh, work on the side for a little bit here. Do you remember the derivative of secant x? It's uh, secant x tan x, right? I could write brackets there, but it's all right. Now, let's say I have secant of some function g of x. g of x could be some complicated thing. It doesn't matter. What would the derivative of that be? Well, it's kind of interesting. You see how there's x in two different places here? You need to replace both of those copies by g of x when you're using the chain rule. So this is going to be secant g of x. Here I will use brackets. Times tan of g of x. And then by chain rule, of course, afterwards we all always multiply by the derivative of what we're ignoring. So there we go. In this case, g of x, of course, is going to be this weird function here, e to the power of tan 1 over x. So why don't we start there? Let's see, uh, let's see what we get. Well, it's like I said, um, it's going to be secant of this times tan of this times the derivative of this. That's exactly what this says right here. So secant of this function. I won't write brackets, doesn't matter, times tan of that. And now we got to multiply by the derivative of e to the tan 1 over x, right? Well, we know that if we take, we know the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So the derivative of e to anything, let's say g of x, is going to be e to that times the derivative of that, right? So here I'm thinking of g of x as now being tan 1 over x, which is, uh, well, the derivative of e to the tan 1 over x, according to this, is going to be basically itself, e to the tan 1 over x. But then afterwards, times the derivative of tan 1 over x. I'm running out of room. I'm just going to go down here a little bit. So where are we at again? We're at this stage right here. We have to multiply by the derivative of tan 1 over x. Well, let's see here again. We know that um, the derivative of tan x is what? The derivative of tan x is secant squared x. So if we take tan of g of x and we, mul and we take its derivative, it's going to be secant squared of g of x times the derivative of g of x, OK? So right now, we're, we're thinking of uh, g of x as being 1 over x, right? So we get secant squared of 1 over x times the derivative of 1 over x, which I think by now you'll realize is negative 1 over x squared, right? I like to just memorize that, actually, because if you don't memorize it, then you kind of have to rewrite it as a power of negative 1, and then... This is negative 1x to the minus 2, and then you need to bring it back down again. So instead of, you can just go straight from here to here if you just memorize that. But either way. And 
let's close off our bracket here and that's the answer okay so I kind of like to think of this as peeling away the skin or like take the layers of an onion and you just peel it away you first knock off the secant right that's what we did right here and then you knock off the E that's what we did right here and then we knock off the tan that's what we did right there and then finally we reach the core which is a simple derivative right this is how chain rule always works so here I think we applied chain rule like three times or something right okay so I hope that's clear let's keep let's do another video